So welcome back to this tutorial series on building watch apps for watch OS 2 and watch kit 2 the new versions of Apple's software in the last video I showed you how to set up your project and open your project up in this simulator and I showed you that your watch app is basically made up of two folders of content the first folder that essentially contains the UI of your uh, app and a second folder that essentially contains the logic and the data of your app, the stuff that actually does things. In this video, I'm going to cover the ways that your app can present itself to the user. And of course, we're going to be spending most of the time up here in the interface part of our app. But there's one interface that you can provide to users that isn't found up in the UI section and is built um, purely with logic and purely programmatically. And that's complications. So if we go over to the Watch OS page on Apple's developer website, we can see there's the watch kit that most of the series is going to cover, or which you use to build apps and um, the glances and dynamic notifications. But here we have a second framework called Clock Kit. We use Clock Kit to make complications. Complications are all these little objects here on the home screen of the watch. As you can see, there's a little um, Volkswagen charging app. There's what looks like a home automation app, flight, um, sports scores. And a date and stuff. Uh, clock kit complications are built purely with programming and are an entire video unto themselves, which of course I'll make later in the series, or I might even make a um, completely separate tutorial, particularly for clock kit and these complications. Complications are a unique thing into themselves, so I'm not going to cover them really in this video or talk about them anymore in this video. I'm going to move on to the main ways that your user will interact with your apps and the main ways that you present your app to your user. And that's the three interfaces that you'll find up here in the interface.storyboard file in the watch kit app folder in Xcode. As you can see, we have four interface files here, making up three different ways for the user to interact with your app. The first file up here is as you can see, titled Interface Controller. This is where you actually build your WatchKit app and it's probably the closest to an iOS app if you kind of want to think about it that way. This is where you build your WatchKit app that the user will open from the home screen on their watch. To set up this um, screen, of course, just like you would on iOS, you can open up the object library down here and you can just pick what you want. So I might pick a button I might pick a switch and I might pick a label and you can just drag all these over as you can see they snap into place that's because the way WatchKit lays out objects is different from on iOS where you just put something in and you set the constraints around it or very old versions of iOS where you just drag something in and um, set its position in WatchKit because of the small screen it lays it out for you so if we can, if we pick this object, we can go into the attributes inspector and down here we can see all the positions. We can start to see all these settings that determine the position of the object. So of course we can choose where it goes horizontally, where it goes vertically. Um, we can move it up and down. And if we click on the button, we can pick uh, how we want to size it. So of course we can have it relative to the container. We can make it 0.5, which is of course half of the container. Or we can go fixed width. We can go uh, to fit content, which will make it the size of what it contains. We can do all the same things with height. And as you can see, you can just drag things on top of each other. If you want to put two things next to each other or make a more complicated sort of interface, you can use th something called a group. We just drag a group in here. So here we have our group. We can drag our switch into our group. We can set its width to 0.5, which is very squished. We can drag our button into our group. And again, set its width to 0.5. And as you can see, we've put two things next to each other. Ah, uh, that's the basic, the most basic way of showing you how things are laid out in WatchKit with the fluid interface. So there's your watch app. 
If we go run with our watch app, we can see that it's laid out. As you can see, it's very squished, but we can do things with it there. Okay, so the next interface I need to talk about is glance interfaces. So, glances are little single view windows that don't provide any functionality to the user. They just present information to the user from the glance menu section of their Apple Watch. So what Apple, what WatchOS will do is depending on a number of properties, it will display a list of these glances that the user can just swipe through to get a quick view of information. And if they want to know more, they can press the glance and it will open up your main WatchKit app. As you can see, this is um, forced into you including all your content in these two groups. And if you select it, there should be templates on how you can lay these out, like um, pre-built template designs. This is the beta, so they're not working. If you have a later stable release of Xcode or even just a later beta of Xcode, you'll see there's all template files um, in here, template layouts. And just like the groups before, you can drag whatever you need into here. Don't need that. The final two interfaces make up uh, notifications how notifications are displayed on Apple Watch. The most important one, and the one that's probably of most interest to you, is this dynamic interface. What this lets you do is, it lets you lay out your interface with uh, images and uh, labels and all sorts of things, and it lets you run code in the background, generating contextual, intelligent information in this um, notification interface. Uh, you can send web requests off, pull in extra information you can lay it out in a way that really well displays your information but of course notifications need to be presented very quickly and very reliably so if there's an error or there's a problem displaying your dynamic interface here that's what the static interface is for it's a um, fallback if your dynamic interface has a problem it can contain labels it can contain images just to uh, sign the interface but it can't contain any logic these labels are simply linked to properties that the um, device will receive in your APNS package. So that's just a simple rock solid fallback for your interface. So that's the free interfaces on um, WatchKit. The last thing I need to talk about is how you link these to logic, which is what I'm going to cover in my next episode of this tutorial.